On the alien planet Lemnoria, human diplomat Derek King sat in his office, unaware of the chaos unfolding beyond the atmosphere. His communicator chirped urgently, displaying a priority message from Earth. As he read the contents, his eyes widened with disbelief. An automated defense system, responding to a perceived alien threat, had awakened a long-forgotten armada of human origin. The message was brief, lacking details, but the implications were clear. Humanity now faced a potential crisis of galactic proportions. Before Derek could process the information, his office door burst open. A squad of Lemnorian security forces stormed in, their scaled skin glistening under the artificial lights. Without explanation, they escorted him to his living quarters, placing him under immediate house arrest. The Lemnorian government, driven by fear and suspicion, had already concluded that humanity intended to conquer the galaxy with its newly awakened fleet. Hours passed as Derek paced his confined space, mind racing with questions and concerns. The door slid open, revealing a tall, imposing Lemnorian military officer. Her elongated head bore the markings of high rank, and her four eyes studied Derek with a mix of curiosity and wariness. I am Yaksa, she announced her translator converting her clicks and whistles into human speech. I have been assigned to guard you and extract information about your fleet's intentions. Derek raised his hands in a gesture of peace. There's been a misunderstanding. I knew nothing about this fleet until today. We need to contact Earth and get to the bottom of this before things escalate further. As they spoke, reports flooded in from across the galaxy. The human fleet, comprising vessels of unimaginable size and capability, continued its advance through space. Its technology far surpassed anything currently known, striking terror into the hearts of alien races who watched helplessly as it traversed their territories. On countless worlds, military forces mobilized. Fleets were assembled, defensive grids activated, and evacuation plans set in motion. The galaxy teetered on the brink of war all because of a misunderstanding about the true nature of humanity's awakened giants. Derek, still under Yaksa's watchful gaze, began piecing together fragments of information. He recalled old human legends of a golden age of space exploration, tales dismissed as mere myth. Combined with snippets of Lemnorian historical records, a picture started to form, one that suggested the fleet might be a remnant from a long-forgotten era of human expansion, possibly predating Earth's known history. As tensions escalated and the ancient fleet continued its implacable advance, Derek realized the magnitude of the task before him. He had to find a way to escape his confinement, contact Earth, and prevent both humans and aliens from plunging into a catastrophic war based on fear and misunderstanding. The fate of the galaxy now rested on his ability to uncover the truth about humanity's mysterious past and the true purpose of the Awoken fleet. Time was running out. With every passing moment, the ancient human armada drew closer to populated systems, its presence alone enough to spark conflict. Derek knew he had to act fast, but trapped on Lemnoria and viewed as an enemy, his options were limited. The galaxy held its breath, waiting to see if diplomacy could prevail or if the awakening of humanity's long-lost fleet would lead to its destruction. Derek's mind raced as he paced the confines of his quarters the gravity of the situation weighing heavily upon him. Yaksa stood silently by the door, her four eyes tracking his every movement. As the hours stretched on, an unexpected shift began to occur between the human diplomat and his Lemnorian guard. Tell me about your world, Yaksa said abruptly, breaking the tense silence. Derek paused, studying her. Earth? It's, uh, diverse. Oceans and mountains, deserts and forests. Billions of people, countless cultures. Yaksa's upper eyes blinked, a sign of interest. And your history? How did humans come to travel the stars? Yaksa's lower eyes narrowed, but she answered, describing Lemnorian philosophy and their cautious approach to interstellar relations. As they exchanged knowledge, a tentative understanding began to form between them. Meanwhile, across the vastness of space, the ancient human fleet continued its inexorable advance. On countless worlds, alien civilizations watched in growing terror as the massive warships crossed their borders with impunity. Near the Orion Nebula, a coalition of alien races hastily assembled their forces, 
preparing for what they saw as an inevitable confrontation with humanity. On Earth, the situation was no less frantic. In a high-security command center, Admiral Elena Reyes barked orders as screens displayed the fleet's progress and the mounting alien response. We need to regain control of that fleet before this escalates into full-scale war, she declared, her voice tight with tension. A young officer approached, tablet in hand. Admiral, the Shadow Blade is prepped and ready. Commander Harrison and his team await your final orders. Reyes nodded grimly. Tell them to launch immediately. They're our best hope of averting disaster. Aboard the sleek, state-of-the-art stealth ship Shadow Blade, Commander Jack Harrison addressed his hand-picked team of technicians and soldiers. Yaxa hesitated, her internal struggle visible in the twitching of her facial scales. Finally, she nodded. Quickly, I'll give you access to a secure terminal, but we must not be detected. Heart pounding, Derek composed a brief, encrypted message detailing the alien coalition's preparations. As he hit send, a piercing alarm shattered the silence. We've been detected, Yaxa hissed, yanking Derek away from the terminal. We must move, now! As they evaded capture, the planet around them was gripped by growing panic. News of the human fleet's advance had leaked to the public, sparking widespread fear. Derek glimpsed scenes of Lemnorians fleeing their homes, heading for underground shelters or crowding onto transports bound for remote outposts. In a moment of respite, hidden in a disused storage room, Derek and Yaxa made a startling discovery. While searching for supplies, they uncovered an ancient data crystal its surface etched with both human and Lemnorian script. Yaxa's eyes widened in disbelief. How is this possible? Our histories make no mention of such an alliance. As they deciphered the crystal's contents, a new understanding dawned. The current conflict, it seemed, was built on millennia of misunderstanding and forgotten history. We need to get this information to both human and Lemnorian leaders, Derek said urgently. It could be the key to preventing war. Yaxa nodded, her earlier suspicion replaced by resolute agreement. We'll need to leave Lemnoria, the Coalition's staging area near the Orion Nebula. If we can reach it, we might be able to stop this before it's too late. As they formulated their daring escape plan, the Shadow Blade encountered its own crisis deep in space. Alarms blared on the bridge as the ship's stealth systems fluctuated wildly. Report, Commander Harrison demanded, gripping his chair as the ship shuddered. Sir, our stealth tech is malfunctioning, a technician responded, fingers flying over her console. We're exposed and the fleet's automated defenses are far more advanced than we anticipated. They're locking on to us. Harrison's mind raced through options. Evasive maneuvers. We need to avoid detection long enough to reach those ships. The shadow blade dove and weaved through the void, its crew working frantically to stay ahead of the ancient fleet's sophisticated tracking systems. On the distant frontier of human space, the colony world of Nova Terra faced its own dilemma. Governor Marcus Chen stood in the colony's control center, watching as the fleet's trajectory brought it ever closer to their remote world. Evacuation protocols are in effect, his aide reported. But sir, there's something else. The survey team in the northern continent, they've found something. Chen turned, brow furrowed. What is it? The aide handed him a tablet displaying images of ruins uncovered by the survey team. Chen's eyes widened as he recognized designs and markings eerily similar to those of the approaching fleet. This can't be coincidence, he murmured. There's a connection between Nova Terra and that fleet. But what? As various factions across the galaxy raced to uncover the truth and prevent catastrophe, the ancient fleet suddenly altered course. No longer advancing randomly, it now moved with clear purpose toward an unknown destination. This new development sent ripples of confusion and fear through all sides of the burgeoning conflict. What was the fleet's true purpose? Where was it heading? And could anyone unravel the mystery before misunderstanding and fear plunged the galaxy into war? War before it was too late. Derek's heart pounded as he and Yaxa raced through the winding corridors of the Lemnorian diplomatic compound. Alarms blared, their shrill cry echoing off the metallic walls. Yaxa's four eyes darted back and forth, searching for any sign of pursuit. This way, she hissed, yanking Derek around a corner. 
They burst into a dimly lit hangar, rows of sleek spacecraft stretching before them. Derek gasped. Which one? Yaksa pointed to a small, agile vessel near the exit. That one. It's fast and maneuverable. Hurry, Derek shouted, scrambling up the entry ramp. Yaksa leapt into the pilot's seat, her long fingers flying over the controls. The engines roared to life as the ship lifted off the ground. Derek strapped himself in, knuckles tightening as he gripped the chairs. The ship shot forward, barely clearing the closing hangar doors. They burst into the night sky, the lights of the city stretching out below them. Almost immediately, proximity alarms began to wail. We've got company, Yaksa growled banking the ship hard to starboard. Through the view screen, Derek saw a squadron of Lemnorian fighters in hot pursuit. The ship bucked and weaved as Yaksa pushed it to its limits, skimming the tops of buildings and diving through canyons of steel and glass. Energy bolts from their pursuers lit up the night around them. Yaksa nodded, pulling back on the controls. The ship's nose tilted upward, engines screaming as they fought against gravity. The sky darkened, stars becoming visible as they climbed higher. A violent shudder ran through the ship. Sparks erupted from a panel to Derek's left. Yaksa's upper eyes narrowed as she scanned the readouts. Long-range communications are down. We took a hit to the antenna array. Derek's stomach dropped. Can we repair it? Not without landing, Yaksa replied grimly. We'll have to make do without it. As they broke free of Lemnoria's atmosphere, the planet's curvature became visible through the viewscreen. The pursuing fighters fell away, unable to match their ship's deep space capabilities. Yaksa's posture relaxed slightly, but her grip on the controls remained firm. For now, but where do we go from here? Derek considered their options. Without long-range communications, they couldn't contact Earth or warn the alien coalition of their approach. They were alone in the vastness of space, carrying vital information that could prevent a galactic war. The Coalition's staging area near the Orion Nebula, he said finally. It's our best chance to stop this before it's too late. Yaksa nodded, plotting the course. As the stars streaked by outside, Derek found himself staring at the ancient data crystal they had discovered. Its surface glinted in the dim light of the cockpit, the etched symbols a testament to a forgotten era of cooperation between humans and Lemnorians. Days passed as their small ship traversed the vast distances between star systems. Derek and Yaksa took turns at the controls, stealing moments of rest when they could. They subsisted on emergency rations, the taste of which Derek found oddly reminiscent of the protein bars he'd eaten during long negotiation sessions back on Earth. As they neared the Orion Nebula, the ship's short-range sensors began to pick up increasing signs of activity. Yaksa's four eyes widened as she studied the readouts. By the ancestral moons, she breathed. The coalition, it's massive. Derek leaned forward, taking in the data. Hundreds, perhaps thousands of ships from dozens of alien races had gathered in the shadow of the nebula's glowing gases. It was a force unlike anything humanity had ever encountered. Before they could formulate a plan to approach the assembled armada, Proximity alarms once again blared to life. A squadron of sleek, predatory ships had detached from the main fleet and were closing fast. Derek's mind raced. Can we outrun them? Yaksa shook her head. Not in this ship. Not against that many. Then we don't run, Derek said, an idea forming. We make them chase us. Evasive maneuvers it is, she said, her hands dancing across the controls. The ship dove and spun, weaving through the debris field at the nebula's edge. Their pursuers followed, weapons flashing. Yaksa's piloting skills, honed by years of military training, kept them just ahead of the energy blast that lit up the space around them. Derek held on tight, his diplomatic training feeling woefully inadequate in the face of a space battle. Yet as Yaksa executed a particularly daring maneuver, narrowly avoiding collision with a massive chunk of ice, he found himself calling out suggestions. There, that dust cloud. Can we use it for cover? Yaksa didn't respond verbally, but the ship banked hard, plunging into the swirling particles. For a moment, all was obscured. When they emerged, 
two of their pursuers had collided in the confusion. The chase continued, a deadly dance among the stars. Their ships shuddered under the strain, alarms warning of multiple system failures. As they rounded a large asteroid, Derek spotted a relatively flat area on its surface. Yaxa, can we land there? She assessed the situation in a split second. It's risky, but we're out of options. Brace for impact. The ship screamed towards the asteroid's surface, pursued by the remaining alien vessels. At the last possible moment, Yaxa fired the reverse thrusters. They hit hard, skidding across the rocky ground before coming to a stop in a cloud of dust and debris. As the cockpit filled with the acrid smell of fried electronics, Derek and Yaxa looked at each other. Despite the danger, a glimmer of hope sparked between them. They had made it this far. Now came the real challenge, convincing a hostile alien coalition that humanity meant no harm. Outside, the whine of approaching ships grew louder. Derek took a deep breath, steeling himself for what was to come. He clutched the data crystal, its weight a reminder of the forgotten history they carried. As Yaxa moved to open the ship's hatch, Derek knew that the next few moments would determine the fate of billions across the galaxy. The hatch hissed open, revealing a ring of armed aliens, their weapons trained on the battered ship. Dialogue, rather than weapons, would determine what happened next. Derek stepped forward, hands raised in a universal gesture of peace ready to put his diplomatic skills to the ultimate test. Derek took a breath, weighing his words carefully. We've discovered evidence of an ancient peace treaty between humans and Lemnorians. This conflict is based on a misunderstanding. Murmurs rippled through the assembled aliens. Yaxa spoke up, her voice carrying the authority of her diplomatic training. We request an audience with your leaders. What we have to share could prevent a catastrophic war. The insectoid alien conferred with its comrades in a series of rapid clicks and chirps. After a tense moment, it turned back to Derek and Yaxa. You will be escorted to our command ship. Any hostile action will result in immediate termination. Aboard the command ship, Derek and Yaxa found themselves in a vast chamber, surrounded by representatives from dozens of alien species. The air was thick with tension and the low hum of translator devices. A holographic display flickered to life in the center of the room, showing the data crystal's contents. Derek began his presentation, his voice clear and measured. This treaty, signed thousands of years ago, proves that humans and Lemnorians once lived in harmony. The current conflict is built on forgotten history and misunderstanding. As they spoke, reactions varied across the assembled alien leaders. Some leaned in, intrigued by the evidence. Others crossed their arms or tentacles, skepticism evident in their postures. A Lemnorian representative, his scales shimmering under the chamber's lights, raised his voice. This could be a human fabrication. How can we trust? Multiple hyperspace signatures detected, an alien technician called out. It's, it's the human fleet. The chamber erupted into chaos as the ancient human ships emerged from hyperspace their massive forms dwarfing even the largest alien vessels. Panic spread through the alien armada, ships scrambling into defensive formations. This is Commander Harrison of the Human Expedition Team. We come in peace. The fleet you see before you is not a weapon of war, but a means of protection and reconnection for humanity's lost colonies. Derek and Yaxa exchanged glances, hope mingling with apprehension. This was the moment that could tip the scales towards peace or plunge them into war. Harrison continued, We've discovered that this fleet was created to safeguard humanity in the event of a catastrophic threat. Its appearance now may indicate a danger to Earth itself. The alien leaders buzzed with conversation, some calling for immediate action, others urging caution. A hardline faction, led by a reptilian alien with crimson scales, pushed through the crowd. This is clearly a human deception the reptilian leader hissed. We cannot allow them to gain the upper hand. All ships open fire on the human fleet. Derek lunged forward, his diplomatic restraint giving way to desperate action. No, you don't understand. But it was too late. A barrage of energy weapons erupted from a section of the alien armada, streaking towards the ancient human ships. 
Derek and Yaxa watched in horror as the beams approached their targets. To everyone's amazement, the attacks dissipated harmlessly against the human fleet's shields. The massive ships remained motionless, their advanced defensive systems easily deflecting the assault without returning fire. In the confusion that followed, Derek grabbed Yaxa's arm. We need to get to the communications array. It's our only chance to broadcast the truth to everyone. Yaxa nodded, her military training kicking in. Follow me. I recognize some of the ship's layout. I think I know a way. They slipped out of the chamber, using the chaos as cover. As they navigated the winding corridors of the alien ship, the sounds of battle echoed around them. Crew members rushed past, too preoccupied with the unfolding crisis, to notice the escaping diplomats. Yaxa led them to a maintenance shaft, her lithe form easily squeezing through the narrow opening. Derek followed, grimacing as he contorted his body to fit. Yaxa's voice drifted back, tinged with amusement. Let's just say my diplomatic training included some unconventional skills. They emerged into a corridor near the ship's stern, alarms blaring all around them. A group of armed security personnel rounded the corner, spotting the intruders immediately. Halt! one of them shouted, raising a weapon. There! Yaxa pointed to a reinforced door at the end of the hallway. That should be the communication hub. As they reached the door, Derek placed his hand on the access panel, praying that the universal diplomatic codes he'd been given would work. For a heart-stopping moment, nothing happened. Then with a soft chime, the door slid open. They rushed inside, sealing the entrance behind them. The room was a maze of consoles and holographic displays, all showing the raging battle outside. Derek's hands flew over the unfamiliar controls, his diplomatic training in alien technologies put to the ultimate test. I think I can broadcast on all frequencies from here, but I need time. Yaxa took up a defensive position by the door. I'll buy you as much as I can. Hurry! As Derek worked frantically to set up the broadcast, Yaxa used her strength to barricade the entrance. The sound of pounding fists and energy weapons striking the door soon filled the air. Whatever you're going to say, Yaxa called out, her voice strained as she braced against the weakening door. Make it count! Derek took a deep breath, looking out at the battle raging beyond the viewports. The fate of billions hung in the balance. He activated the transmitter, his voice carried to every ship in the system. This is Derek King, representative of Earth. I implore all forces to cease fire immediately. The human fleet is not here to wage war, but to protect us all from a greater threat. As Derek's impassioned plea echoed across the battlefield, the door to the communication hub began to give way. Yaxa braced herself for the fight to come, while beyond the ship, the future of interstellar relations hung in the balance. The door behind them finally gave way with a thunderous crash. Yaxa spun around, ready to defend Derek, but instead of hostile forces, they found themselves face to face with Ambassador Sarah Chen and a contingent of alien diplomats. As they hurried through the corridors of the command ship, Derek noticed the change in atmosphere. The panic and hostility had given way to a tense, expectant quiet. Alien crew members watched them pass with a mixture of curiosity and apprehension. They entered a vast chamber where representatives from dozens of species were gathered. The room buzzed with multilingual chatter, translator devices working overtime to keep up with the rapid exchanges. At the center, a holographic display showed the standoff between the ancient human fleet and the alien armada. Ambassador Chen took her place at the main podium, her posture straight and determined. Esteemed delegates, she began, her voice cutting through the noise. We face an unprecedented crisis. Earth, humanity's homeworld, stands on the brink of destruction. A murmur rippled through the crowd. Chen continued. A massive solar flare threatens to devastate our planet. Our only hope lies in the advanced technology of the ancient fleet you see before you. She gestured to the holographic display, where the massive human ships hung motionless in space. We propose using this fleet to create a protective shield around Earth. However, we cannot do this alone. We need your help, your expertise, your cooperation. Derek stepped forward, his diplomatic instincts kicking in. If I may address the assembly, he said, his voice calm but firm, 
The room quieted, all eyes turning to him. What Ambassador Chen proposes is not domination, but cooperation. We stand at a crossroads. This crisis offers us an opportunity to forge a new era of interspecies collaboration. Yaksa moved to stand beside him, her four eyes scanning the room. As someone who has worked closely with humans, I can attest to their capacity for peace. The treaty we discovered proves that our species once coexisted harmoniously. We can do so again. Their words seemed to have an impact, but tension still hung heavy in the air. Suddenly, alarms blared throughout the ship. The holographic display shifted, showing a group of alien vessels breaking formation and advancing on the ancient human fleet. We're picking up weapon signatures, a technician called out. They're attacking the human ships. Commander Jack Harrison's voice crackled over the comms. This is Harrison. We're under attack by unknown forces. Our systems are still powering up. We can't hold them off for long. The chamber descended into pandemonium. Accusations flew as delegates argued over who was responsible for the attack. Ambassador Chen's face paled as she realized the delicate negotiations were unraveling before her eyes. In the midst of the chaos, a slender, silver-skinned alien approached Derek and Yaksa. I am Zara, she introduced herself, her voice melodic and calming. I represent a faction that believes in the potential for peace. What can we do to help? Derek's mind raced, assessing the situation. We need to buy time, he said. If we can keep the negotiations going, maybe we can prevent this from escalating into full-scale war. Yaksa nodded in agreement. We should gather support from moderate factions. Show them that cooperation is in everyone's best interest. As they began to move through the crowd, speaking with various delegates, a new voice cut through the commotion. Governor Marcus Chen of Novaterra appeared on the main view screen, his expression grave. I have information that may change the course of these negotiations, he announced. The room fell silent, all attention focused on the governor. There are other dormant human fleets scattered across the galaxy. The revelation sent shockwaves through the assembly. Delegates huddled in groups, whispering furiously. The balance of power had shifted once again. Before anyone could fully process this new information, another alert sounded. A Lemnorian science vessel had arrived, carrying critical data about the approaching solar flare. The Lemnorian captain, his scales shimmering with bioluminescent patterns, addressed the assembly. Our advanced sensors have detected that the solar flare is far more powerful than initially estimated. It has the potential to affect not just Earth, but nearby alien worlds as well. This news galvanized the room. The threat was no longer just to humanity, but to multiple species across the sector. Derek caught Zara's eye across the chamber, a silent understanding passing between them. This shared danger could be the key to unity. Ambassador Chen sees the moment. In light of this shared threat, I propose an exchange. We offer to share all knowledge and technology discovered in the ancient fleet in return for your immediate assistance in protecting Earth and other affected worlds. Her words hung in the air, heavy with possibility and danger. The chamber buzzed with excited and fearful whispers as delegates considered the implications of her offer. Your ambassador's proposal is bold, Zara said, her voice low. It could change everything. Derek nodded, acutely aware of the history unfolding around them. It's a risk, but one we have to take. The alternative is unthinkable. As the delegates prepared to make their momentous decision, alarms blared once again. The battle for the ancient fleet had intensified, and Earth's first brush with the solar flare's effects was beginning to manifest. Time was running out. The fate of billions hung in the balance, waiting on the choices that would be made in the coming moments. Derek steeled himself for what was to come knowing that his role in these negotiations could shape the future of interstellar relations for generations to come. The chamber erupted into chaos as alarms blared throughout the command ship. Holographic displays flickered, showing Earth's orbital defense stations under attack. Ambassador Chen's face paled as she watched humanity's first line of defense crumble. We're losing contact with Earth, a technician shouted over the din. The solar flare's initial wave is disrupting global communications. Derek felt a chill run down his spine. 
The situation was spiraling out of control faster than anyone had anticipated. He turned to Yaksa, seeing his own concern mirrored in her four eyes. Ambassador Chen's voice cut through the pandemonium. Esteemed delegates, we no longer have the luxury of debate. Earth faces imminent destruction. We must act now, united, or billions will perish. Her words hung in the air, heavy with urgency. The chamber fell silent as the gravity of the situation sank in. Even the most vocal opponents of human intervention seemed to waver. Zara, the silver-skinned alien, stepped forward. Ambassador Chen is right. This threat transcends our differences. We must focus on survival. As if in response to Zara's words, a new transmission crackled through the command ship's speakers. Commander Jack Harrison's voice filled the room, tense but controlled. This is Harrison. We've partially reactivated the ancient ship systems. We've discovered a shielding technology that could deflect the worst of the solar flare. But we're running on fumes here. We need a massive power source to generate a planet-wide shield. Derek's mind raced. He exchanged a quick glance with Yaksa, an idea forming between them. He stepped up to the central podium, heart pounding. Delegates of the coalition, he began, his voice steady despite his nerves. We have an opportunity here, not just to save Earth, but to forge a new era of cooperation. I propose we combine our technological capabilities to power the ancient ship's shielding system. Murmurs rippled through the crowd. Yaksa joined Derek at the podium her tall form a reassuring presence at his side. This crisis affects us all, she added. By working together, we can overcome not just this threat, but the mistrust that has divided us for so long. As the delegates began to discuss the proposal, Governor Marcus Chen's hologram flickered to life in the center of the chamber. Ambassador Chen nodded, her expression determined. We'll need to organize an expedition immediately. Time is of the essence. As preparations for the joint human-alien mission to Nova Terra began, a violent tremor shook the command ship. Warning klaxons blared as the holographic displays showed a fleet of ships emerging from hyperspace. We're under attack, a security officer shouted. It's the radical faction that tried to seize the ancient fleet. Derek watched in horror as enemy ships swarmed around the command vessel. Explosions bloomed in the vacuum of space as the Coalition's defensive screen engaged the attackers. They're launching boarding pods, Yaksa called out, her military training evident in her crisp assessment of the situation. Derek turned to see Zara already moving towards one of the ship's defensive stations. Their eyes met for a moment, an unspoken understanding passing between them. As they ran through the corridors, Derek's mind whirled with the enormity of what was happening. Earth was in danger. Alien radicals were attacking, and the fate of multiple worlds hung in the balance. And here he was, a diplomat turned reluctant warrior, fighting alongside beings he'd only recently considered potential enemies. They reached the weapons control room, finding it in disarray. Several alien crew members lay injured, their various anatomies a stark reminder of the diversity now united in a common cause. Yaksa immediately took charge, her four eyes scanning the unfamiliar controls. I can operate the point defense systems. Derek, can you manage the shield harmonics? Derek nodded, though his heart raced at the responsibility. He'd trained in basic ship operations as part of his diplomatic duties, but this was far beyond anything he'd experienced. As they worked to repel the borders, reports flooded in from across the ship. The radical faction, led by an alien warlord named Crax, had launched a full-scale assault. Their goal was clear prevent humans from accessing the ancient fleet's technology at any cost. Through the chaos of battle, Derek caught glimpses of the larger conflict unfolding. On the main view screen, he saw the expedition to Nova Terra departing, racing against time to retrieve the energy crystal. Earth, a blue marble in the distance, was visibly affected by the solar storms, its night side flickering with widespread power outages. Derek! Yaksa's shout snapped him back to their immediate crisis. We have borders on this level! The door to the weapons control room burst open. Derek spun, expecting to face hostile aliens. Instead, he found Zara, her silver skin marred with scorch marks, leading a group of coalition security forces. Derek hesitated, torn between his duty to defend the ship and his role as a diplomat. Zara seemed to sense his conflict. 
Sometimes, she said softly, the best diplomacy is ensuring there's a tomorrow to negotiate for. Her words steeled Derek's grit. He nodded, checking the unfamiliar weapon he'd acquired during the chaos. As they moved through the ship's winding corridors, fighting off waves of Krax's followers, Derek found himself working in seamless coordination with Zara. Their movements complemented each other, human and alien united in purpose. Meanwhile, on Nova Terra, Governor Chen led the expedition through the planet's long-dormant defenses. Ancient turrets and energy barriers sprang to life, challenging their every step towards the buried energy crystal. Back on Earth, the situation grew dire. Massive solar storms lashed the planet, causing unprecedented environmental chaos. Coastal cities faced tidal surges, unlike anything in recorded history. The planet's magnetic field fluctuated wildly, threatening to expose the surface to deadly radiation. In orbit, Commander Harrison and his team worked frantically to prepare the ancient human ship for its monumental task. Engineers from a dozen species labored side by side, integrating technologies in ways never before attempted. As the battle raged around the command ship, Ambassador Chen coordinated the massive, multi-species effort to power the shield technology. The fate of billions rested on this patchwork solution of human and alien ingenuity. Derek, Yaxa, and Zara fought their way to the ship's core, preventing Krax's forces from sabotaging the vital systems. As they secured the area, a transmission from Commander Harrison brought unexpected news. This revelation sent shockwaves through the coalition. Many alien leaders, now understanding the shared threat, began to see the value in cooperation. However, it only seemed to fuel Krax's grit to seize control. As the energy crystal extraction team on Nova Terra finally reached their goal, they faced a new challenge. The artifact was far larger and more complex than anyone had anticipated. They would need to find a way to transport and integrate it with the shield system before the most destructive wave of the solar flare hit. With multiple crises unfolding simultaneously, the various factions found themselves forced to work together in ways they never had before. The choices made in these crucial moments would shape the future of interstellar relations for generations to come. Derek stood at a viewport, watching the battle unfold around them. Earth hung in the distance, beautiful and fragile. He felt Zara's presence as she joined him. Your world, she said softly, it's quite something. Derek turned to her, struck by the play of starlight on her silver skin. In that moment, he realized that his feelings for her had grown beyond mere diplomatic courtesy. Their relationship, still new and undefined, seemed to embody the potential for understanding between their species. But before he could respond, alarms blared once again. The most destructive wave of the solar flare was approaching, and Krax's forces were mounting a final, desperate assault. The coalition stood on the brink of either a groundbreaking moment of galactic unity or a catastrophic failure that could reshape the power dynamics of known space. As Derek rushed back into action, he knew that the next few hours would determine not just his fate, but that of billions across the galaxy. Status update, Derek shouted into his comm unit. Ambassador Chen's voice crackled through, strained but composed. The extraction team on Nova Terra has secured the energy crystal. Governor Chen is leading the transport operation to our staging area near the Orion Nebula. Derek allowed himself a moment of relief before the gravity of the situation set in again. What's the ETA? Uncertain, Chen replied. They're using a specialized containment field for the crystal. It's slowing them down significantly. As if on cue, the ship rocked violently. Yaxa steadied Derek as he stumbled. We've got company, she hissed, her four eyes scanning the area ahead. In the heat of the skirmish, Derek caught sight of a hostile alien aiming at Zara's exposed flank. Without thinking, he threw himself into the line of fire. A searing pain tore through his side as the energy blast grazed him. Derek! Zara's melodic voice was tinged with concern as she dispatched the last attacker. She knelt beside him, her cool hands examining his wound. I'm fine, Derek grunted, though the pain suggested otherwise. We need to keep moving. Yaxa helped him to his feet, her expression a mix of admiration and exasperation. Your bravery is commendable, 
but please try to stay alive, Derek. We need you. As they pressed on, reports flooded in from across the coalition fleet. Commander Harrison's voice cut through the din, his frustration evident. We're facing significant setbacks integrating the power systems. Each failure brings us closer to catastrophe. Derek exchanged worried glances with his companions. The ancient human warship was their best hope for generating the planetary shield. If Harrison's team couldn't get it operational in time, their comm units crackled again, this time with Governor Chen's voice. We've secured the crystal, but our ship has taken heavy damage. The containment field is failing. Derek's blood ran cold. If the crystal's energy was released prematurely, it could vaporize everything within a massive radius. Governor, Yaxa spoke urgently, you need to land on the ancient warship. It's your only chance to safely deliver the crystal. Understood, Chen replied, his voice tight with concentration. Initiating manual landing sequence now. As they approached the ancient warship's control center, a new alarm blared through the fleet. Ambassador Chen's voice came through, filled with scarcely controlled panic. Long-range sensors have detected a massive solar ejection heading directly for our position. We're out of time. Derek's mind raced. The coalition fleet, the ancient human ships, Earth itself. Everything was in the path of destruction. They needed a miracle. Inside the control center, they found Commander Harrison hunched over a console, his face etched with lines of exhaustion and grit. He looked up as they entered, his eyes locking onto Derek. King, we're out of options, Harrison said grimly. I'm initiating a partial reactivation of the fleet's AI. It's our only hope of managing the shield generation in time. Harrison's fingers flew over the controls. The room hummed with energy as systems long dormant began to awaken. Displays flickered to life, streams of data flowing across screens faster than the eye could follow. For a moment, everything seemed to be working perfectly. The AI effortlessly optimized the power integration process, solving compatibility issues that had stymied Harrison's team for hours. Then, without warning, a powerful signal began broadcasting from the ship. Derek watched in horror as the signal strength increased exponentially. It's sending a message, Zara said, her silver brow furrowed in concentration as she studied a nearby console. Two other dormant human fleets, I think. The implications hit Derek like a physical blow. The fragile alliance they had forged could shatter in an instant if the other alien factions believed humans were attempting to assert dominance. We need to stop it, Derek said, his voice hoarse. We have to input the override codes manually. Yaxa nodded grimly. It won't be easy. The ship's automated defense systems are reactivating, and Krax's forces are still out there. As if to emphasize her point, the ship shuddered under another assault. Through the viewport, Derek could see the Coalition fleet engaged in a desperate battle against Krax's ships, all while the ominous glow of the approaching solar ejection grew ever brighter. We don't have a choice, Derek said, checking his weapon. Earth is running out of time. Let's move. As they set out into the labyrinthine corridors of the ancient warship, Derek couldn't shake the feeling that every step brought them closer to a point of no return. The fate of billions rested on their shoulders, and the margin for error was non-existent. Behind them, the partially awakened AI continued its work, shield generators humming to life as they drew power from the unstable crystal and the patchwork of alien technologies. But without the override codes, there was no telling what else it might do. Ahead lay a gauntlet of reactivating defense systems and Krax's determined saboteurs. And beyond that, the unforgiving vacuum of space, where a stellar tempest was brewing that threatened to scour the life from multiple worlds. Derek squared his shoulders, ignoring the pain from his earlier injury. There was no time for doubt, no room for fear. They had a job to do, and the clock was ticking. Incoming transmission, Harrison called out his voice taut with urgency. The control center's main display flickered to life, revealing Commander Harrison's haggard face. We've got a critical situation, Harrison said, his eyes darting between multiple screens. The energy crystal's power output is fluctuating wildly. If we don't stabilize it soon, this whole operation could go up in flames. Derek felt his stomach drop. What do we need to do? 
Harrison's expression grew grim. Someone needs to manually stabilize the crystal from within the ship's core. It's a suicide mission. The radiation levels in there are off the charts. No, Yaxa interjected, her four eyes locking onto Derek. Your human physiology wouldn't last a minute in there. My Lemnorian body is better equipped to handle the radiation. Before Derek could argue, the ship's AI chimed in, its synthesized voice eerily calm. Alert. Hull breach detected. Hostile forces advancing toward the control center. Harrison cursed under his breath. King, we need you and Zara to coordinate the defense. Use the ship's automated systems to hold them off as long as you can. Derek nodded, his heart racing as he turned to Zara. Her silver skin seemed to ripple with tension, but her eyes were steady. Let's go, she said, her melodic voice tinged with grit. As they moved to the tactical stations, Yaxa prepared to enter the core. Derek caught her arm, words failing him for a moment. Yaxa, I... She smiled, a gesture that looked both alien and deeply familiar. I know, Derek. Now go save our ship. With a final nod, Yaxa disappeared into the access tunnel leading to the core. Derek forced himself to focus on the task at hand, pulling up the ship's defensive schematics. We've got multiple breaches, Zara reported, her fingers flying over the console. Crax's forces are spreading out, trying to overwhelm our defenses. Derek integrated the ship's targeting systems with the remaining coalition forces. Let's give them a warm welcome, he said, activating a series of automated turrets. Derek's mind reeled at the implications. The solar flare's effects were more widespread than they'd anticipated. He opened his mouth to respond when Governor Chen cut in. We've identified a critical flaw in the shield design, the governor said, his voice strained. In its current configuration, it will protect Earth, but leave several alien worlds exposed. We're working on modifications now, but time is running out. Harrison's face appeared on a nearby screen, his expression grim. We'll implement the changes as soon as you send them through. But we can't wait long. The crystal's barely stable as it is. As if to underscore his point, the ship shuddered violently. Derek stumbled, catching himself on the edge of the console. Through the viewport, he could see the ominous glow of the approaching solar ejection, a wall of fire that threatened to consume everything in its path. In the ship's core, Yaxa fought through waves of agony as she approached the unstable crystal. The radiation tore through her body, every step a battle against her screaming nerves. But she pushed on, drawing on her advanced knowledge of energy fields to begin the delicate stabilization process. Back in the control center, Derek and Zara found themselves in the thick of the fight. Crax's forces had breached the outer defenses and were pushing toward their position. They moved in perfect sync, covering each other's blind spots and anticipating each other's moves. During a brief lull in the fighting, Derek found himself back to back with Zara. He could feel the heat of her body, the steady rhythm of her breathing. Their eyes met for a moment, and Derek saw his own mix of fear, tenacity, and something deeper reflected in her gaze. The moment was shattered by a fresh wave of attackers. As they returned to the fray, Derek felt a renewed surge of energy. Whatever happened, he wasn't fighting just for Earth anymore. A sudden alarm blared through the ship. Harrison's voice cut through the chaos. The shield system's reaching critical mass. We need to activate it now or we'll lose our window. But the modifications, Derek started, aren't complete. Harrison finished. We have to make a choice, Earth's safety or the other world's. The weight of the decision bore down on Derek. Billions of lives hung in the balance, and there was no right answer. Before he could respond, Yaxa's voice came through, weak and tinged with pain. Crystal. Stabilized, she gasped. Hurry! As if in response to Yaxa's efforts, the ship surged with power. The shield generators hummed to life ready to activate at a moment's notice. Incoming transmission, the AI announced. Governor Chen has completed the shield modifications and is transmitting the data now. Harrison's fingers flew over the controls. Implementing now. Coalition fleet, move into defensive positions. We need every second you can give us. Through the viewport, Derek watched as the Allied ships formed a protective barrier. 
The glow of the solar ejection had grown to fill the entire view, a tsunami of cosmic fire bearing down on them. As he and Zara fought their way toward the core, Derek could see the shield starting to form, a shimmering barrier spreading out from the ancient warship. But would it be enough? And would they reach Yaxa in time? With Krax's forces closing in, the modified shield struggling to encompass multiple worlds, and the awakening human fleets approaching from the depths of space, Derek knew that the next few moments would determine the fate of not just Earth, but the entire galaxy. The corridor to the core loomed ahead, bathed in the eerie glow of warning lights. Derek and Zara exchanged a look, then plunged into the unknown, racing against time to save their friend and secure a future for all. Derek and Zara burst through the doors of the core chamber, their eyes immediately locking onto Yaxa's crumpled form. The Lemnorian lay motionless beside the now-stabilized crystal, wisps of acrid smoke rising from her radiation-scorched body. Yaxa! Derek called out, rushing to her side. He gently cradled her head, feeling the heat radiating from her usually cool skin. Stay with us. We're getting you out of here. Zara quickly assessed the situation, her silver brow furrowed with concern. We need to move her carefully. The radiation damage is severe. Together they lifted Yaxa as gently as possible. The Lemnorian's eyes fluttered open for a moment, a weak groan escaping her lips before she lapsed back into unconsciousness. As they carried their friend from the chamber, the ship violently shuddered beneath their feet. Derek stumbled, nearly losing his grip on Yaxa. What was that? he gasped, regaining his balance. Zara's eyes darted to a nearby status panel. The shield activation, it's pushing the ship to its limits. They pressed on, the corridor ahead bathed in the pulsing red glow of emergency lighting. Alarms blared, their urgent wails adding to the cacophony of creaking metal and distant explosions. Medical bay, Derek panted, adjusting his grip on Yaxa. We need to... His words were cut short as a group of alien figures rounded the corner ahead, weapons raised. Derek's heart sank as he recognized the distinct silhouettes of Krax's saboteurs, Zara, take Yaxa, Derek said, carefully transferring the Lemnorian's weight to his companion. Get her to the medical bay. I'll hold them off. Zara hesitated for a split second, her eyes meeting Derek's. In that moment, a wealth of unspoken emotions passed between them. Then she nodded, hefting Yaxa over her shoulder with surprising strength. Be careful, she said, her melodic voice tinged with worry. As Zara retreated down a side passage with Yaxa, Derek turned to face the oncoming threat. He drew his weapon, using the narrow corridor to his advantage as he took cover behind a jutting bulkhead. The first saboteur rounded the corner, and Derek fired. The alien went down with a shriek, its companions immediately returning fire. Energy bolts sizzled past Derek's head, leaving scorch marks on the ancient metal walls. Derek's combat training kicked in. He moved with fluid precision, using the ship's twisting corridors to outmaneuver his opponents. A well-placed shot here, a quick dodge there, he slowly whittled down their numbers. Meanwhile, in the control center, Commander Harrison's fingers flew over the console as he initiated the modified shield design. The ship groaned in protest, systems straining under the immense power demands. Structural integrity at 62% and falling, the AI announced its synthetic voice a stark contrast to the chaos unfolding around them. Harrison gritted his teeth, his eyes never leaving the streams of data flowing across his screens. Reroute power from non-essential systems. We need every ounce of energy we can get. A violent tremor rocked the ship, nearly throwing Harrison from his seat. Warning lights flashed across his console as new alarms joined the already deafening chorus. Sir, a technician called out. Krax's forces have breached the outer defenses. They're heading for the control center. Harrison's teeth gritted. He knew the shield activation process required his constant attention. If he abandoned his post now, all would be lost. Hold the line, he ordered, his voice steady despite the fear gnawing at his gut. Regardless of the cost, we cannot let them interrupt the shield activation. In orbit around Earth, the coalition fleet moved into defensive positions. Ships of various designs and sizes formed a protective barrier, their weapon systems humming to life. 
Admiral Corzan, a grizzled Centauri veteran, watched the approaching wall of fire with a mix of awe and dread. All ships, prepare to fire dispersion weapons on my mark, he commanded. As one, the fleet unleashed a barrage of specialized energy weapons. The beams lanced out into space, striking the leading edge of the solar ejection. For a moment, it seemed to work. The cosmic inferno faltered, its advance slowing. But the reprieve was short-lived. The solar storm surged forward with renewed vigor, shrugging off the fleet's assault like a minor inconvenience. Corzan's mandibles clicked in frustration. Keep firing, he ordered. Every second we buy could make the difference. Back on the ancient warship, Derek finally dispatched the last of Crax's saboteurs. He leaned against the wall, catching his breath as he took stock of his injuries. Nothing serious, but the fight had cost him precious time. He set off towards the medical bay at a run, praying he wasn't too late. As he rounded the final corner, he saw Zara standing outside the bay's entrance, her silver skin reflecting the pulsing emergency lights. Yaksa, Derek asked, his voice hoarse. Zara's four eyes met his, filled with a mix of hope and worry. The ship's medical technology is incredible, she said, but Yaksa's condition is severe. It's too soon to know if... Then reality reasserted itself with brutal force. The ship's AI voice echoed through the corridor. Warning. Shield activation. Sequence initiating. Gravitational anomaly detected. Derek and Zara exchanged a look of alarm. Whatever was happening, they knew the next few moments would determine not just their fate, but that of billions across multiple worlds. As they raced back towards the control center, neither of them noticed the faint, shimmering distortion beginning to form at the edge of the ship's newly activated shield, the first sign of a phenomenon that would soon threaten to tear apart the very fabric of space itself. The shimmering distortion at the edge of the shield grew more pronounced, its gravitational pull intensifying with each passing moment. Commander Harrison's eyes darted between the anomaly and the streams of data flooding his screens. The ship groaned under the immense strain, systems pushed far beyond their intended limits. Structural integrity at 41% and falling rapidly, the AI announced, its synthetic voice tinged with urgency. All hands, this is Commander Harrison. Initiate emergency protocol Omega. Evacuate to the shielded area near the control center immediately. As the crew scrambled to comply, Harrison's fingers flew across the console, rerouting power from every non-essential system. Life support in most of the ship's sections shut down the energy diverted to the struggling shield generators. In the medical bay, Derek and Zara exchanged worried glances as the evacuation order came through. Yaksa lay on a nearby bed, her condition stable but critical. We can't move her to the control center, Zara said, her silver brow furrowed with concern. The radiation damage is too severe. She needs constant medical attention. Derek's eyes fell on the nearby escape pod. The medical equipment inside, it might be her only chance. Together, they carefully transferred Yaksa into the pod, monitoring her vitals as they worked. Just as they finished securing her, a violent explosion rocked the ship. Cracks, Derek growled, drawing his weapon. He must have rallied his remaining forces for one last push. Zara moved to Derek's side, her own weapon at the ready. We need to hold them off long enough to launch Yaksa's pod. The corridor outside the medical bay erupted with weapons fire. Derek and Zara took up defensive positions, their movements perfectly synchronized. Years of training and shared combat experience allowed them to anticipate each other's actions, covering blind spots and maximizing their effectiveness. Crax's forces pushed forward relentlessly, their alien weapons scorching the ancient metal walls. Derek ducked behind a fallen bulkhead, energy bolts sizzling past his head. He returned fire, dropping two attackers in quick succession. Beside him, Zara moved with fluid grace, her four eyes allowing her to track multiple targets simultaneously. She called out enemy positions, allowing Derek to focus his fire where it was most needed. As the battle raged, Derek found himself marveling at Zara's skill and dedication. Her presence at his side filled him with a sense of security and trust he had never experienced before. Suddenly, Cracks himself appeared at the end of the corridor, 
his massive frame silhouetted by the flickering emergency lights. The alien leader charged forward, shrugging off Derek's shots as if they were mere annoyances. In a blur of motion, Cracks closed the distance, his powerful arm swinging towards Derek's head. Derek tried to dodge, but he knew he was too slow. At the last moment, Zara threw herself between them, taking the full force of the blow. But something unexpected happened. Cracks hesitated, his eyes fixed on Zara's prone form. In that moment of indecision, Derek saw his opening. He lunged forward, using every ounce of his strength and training to subdue the alien leader. As Cracks went down, the remaining attackers fell into disarray. Derek quickly secured Cracks, then rushed to Zara's side. Stay with me, he pleaded, applying pressure to her wound. We're going to get through this together. In the control center, Harrison's attention was drawn to a sudden surge of energy readings. The wormhole at the edge of the shield had grown exponentially, its gravitational pull now threatening to tear the ship apart. But as Harrison studied the data, a wild idea began to form. He opened a channel to the Coalition fleet and the newly arrived human ships. This is Commander Harrison. The wormhole, I believe we can use its energy to our advantage. If we can channel the power from your ship's shields and weapon systems through the anomaly, we might be able to supercharge our own shield and disperse the solar ejection. There was a moment of stunned silence before Ambassador Chen's voice came through. It's risky, but at this point, we have nothing to lose. I'll coordinate the maneuver. What followed was a display of cooperation unlike anything the galaxy had ever seen. Ships from dozens of species, including the awakened human armada, formed a precise formation around the wormhole's perimeter. Energy beams lanced out, connecting ship to ship, creating a vast network of power. As the solar ejection made contact with the outer edge of the shield, the combined might of the Allied fleet surged through the wormhole. The ancient warship's AI, recognizing the potential of this strategy, interfaced with the Coalition's systems, optimizing the energy distribution. The shield flared brilliantly, a dazzling display of light and power that spread across the star system. The massive solar event began to disperse, its destructive force dissipating against the supercharged barrier. But the strain on the ancient warship was reaching critical levels. In the control center, Harrison and his crew worked frantically to maintain the shield's integrity, knowing that its collapse would doom billions across multiple worlds. Suddenly, a familiar voice crackled over the comms. This is Yaxa. I've managed to stabilize a critical power junction using Lemnorian energy manipulation techniques. It should buy us a few more seconds. Those precious moments proved crucial. As the solar ejection's intensity began to wane, the Allied fleets maintained their formation, pouring every ounce of available power into the shield. But a new threat loomed. The wormhole, now pulsing with immense energy, started to contract. Harrison's eyes widened as he realized the implications. The anomaly's collapse could result in a shockwave capable of destroying the fleet and nearby planets. In that moment, Harrison knew what he had to do. He took manual control of the ancient warship, plotting a course directly into the heart of the wormhole. The future belongs to all of us. Make it a good one. The ancient warship plunged into the wormhole, disappearing in a blinding flash of light. Moments later, the anomaly collapsed in on itself, releasing a massive burst of energy that harmlessly dispersed the remaining solar radiation. As the light faded and the shield flickered out of existence, Derek, Zara, and Yaxa emerged from their escape pod. They found themselves facing a galaxy forever changed by the events they had just witnessed. The shared experience of facing annihilation and working together to survive had fostered a new spirit of cooperation between humans and alien species. The awakened human fleets, once viewed with suspicion and fear, were now seen as powerful allies in the face of cosmic dangers. As Derek helped Zara from the pod, their eyes met. In that moment, they both knew that their bond had been forged anew in the crucible of battle. Whatever challenges lay ahead, they would face them together. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.